here we go. Welcome to the Region Invitational 2. I'm Ripper. I will be casting Average Joes versus Stitches Be Crazy. Where it says the best of one on Infernal Shrines. Stitches Be Crazy on the left, Average Joes on the right. Average Joes have the first pick as the higher seed. I believe this is roughly a Division A team versus a Division... B or C team as far as NGS tiers go. Um, Average Joe's was a East last season. Stitches Be Crazy is a new team. They're aiming for B or C divisions. So on paper, the favorite team is Average Joe's in terms of skill level. But you never know what can happen. As we get underway here, we have a Genji ban and an Asmodan ban. Not surprising. With our uh, three ban system, super common to see these bans occur. Deckard Kane ban, also not surprised. We are on a new patch. Deckard's been rising in popularity, especially with the Melfure and Ace Block nerf. And it is a zone control map. You're fighting a lot over these points. Deckard provides a lot of sustain power, and of course, Heretic Q plus his Seal of Scrolling is really pesky. Chromie ban, also sensible here. I shall do what I First pick Alex Straza from Average Joes. Not too surprised to see that either. It is her best map. Alex also has been extra popular since the buff to her Life Finder ultimate. And the bug was also fixed on that, so no more silly bug stuff occurring with the cooldown either. Phoenix Johanna, very solid opening from Stitches Be Crazy here. Uh, gives you a lot of rotational power and wave clear and try and clear as well. I like it. Very solid. Doesn't really give away what you're trying to do. Just a strong opener. Blaze and Junkrat for Average Joes. So that's their offlaner. Well, technically you can offlane Junkrat, but he should be in the four-man rotation, or maybe he'll be stalling or slowing down stitches or be crazy's rotations. Going to be interesting to see how they play this Junkrat specifically. Third band's out here. I like this because they haven't shown their front line yet, so it's going to be really interesting to see what they pair with this Junkrat. Uh, Diablo ban, pretty fair. He's a good hero still. It's a pretty decent draft of them. This blaze can go in and out. Junk rap boops into Diablo shenanigans if you want. Alex, you know, high health target for Alex to heal. Uh, I would expect maybe a healer or damage ban or an offlane ban. I forgot about Urel. Of course, Rainer's still in the pool. He was a little nerfed at the last patch. We'll see if anyone feels compelled to pick him up. I actually like Rainer Phoenix as a duo, damage duo, personally. They can, uh, pair off each other quite well. Even tank, even like a super tank like Johanna just sort of gets shredded. Of course, Stitches Be Crazy have the Johanna themselves. We'll see what they opt for here. They do have two picks. Healer plus damage, maybe. Healer, yeah, well, damage in a sense, off laner. Sonya, another good pick. Matches up decently against the Blaze. Is very good on the Shrine Point. Especially if you can control it, bully the enemy team off. Sonya can stay on there alone if she wants to. Just whirlwinding all over the place while the other three or four members zone. Uh, the Stukov, pretty good pickup. It's either the Stukov or the Malf. Deckard was banned. Alex already taken. Uh, I do like Stukov here. The Lurking Arm Silence is really obnoxious. They do give up this Rainer, though. Rainer Muradin's another combo I like a lot, personally. Again, they can pair well off each other. Just as a duo, skirmish, very strong skirmishing power. With uh, Muradin has the jump in. He can stun and slow. Proc Rainer's Ace in the hole for him quite easily. Can also go give him the axe at seven if he wants, or the skull cracker. Pretty nasty duo to Maev. I was expecting a Maev from one of these teams. I wasn't sure which team it would be. Turns out to be Stitches Be Crazy. And this will be our mashup. Stitches Be Crazy, maybe a little melee heavy. Technically they have four melee heroes and only the Phoenix. 
versus a Junkrat and a Blaze. Uh, that gets a lot of value for the enemy team. A lot of potential boops and multi stuns. But uh, we'll see how this plays out. Gonna be really interesting. Uh, the key hero to look out for on Stitches Be Crazy is really going to be this Maev, how well Moxilla plays this hero. Um, could punish this, you know, Murden, this Blaze, especially if he can get on top of like an Alex or a Rainer. Will be uh, very interesting to see. Sonya as well is going to need to be careful. Switch to our live game live screen as soon as we load in here. Someone's not loading, perhaps, taking a little longer than usual. But on the more key heroes for the side of Average Joes, uh, this Junkrat is probably the biggest wild card because, you know, mind boobs can really turn things around all of a sudden or, you know, get you a free pick or turn a fight instantly in your favor if you can boop someone back into your team or maybe way off the point or something like that. And uh, but Murd and Junkrat both excel at delaying rotations if they want as well. Switch over to the live screen. Prepare yourselves for battle. And let's get started. And the red team on the right, we have a random task on the Muradin. It's Jesus on the Alexstrasza, Defcon 70 on the Blaze. Had MG on the Rainer, and Beebs on the Junkrat. And for the blue team in the left corner, to just be crazy, we have Cheese on Phoenix, Techio seconds. on the Stuka, Belalos on the jo Johanna, Maxilla Five, on four, the Maev, and GZB57 on the Sanya. Okay, we actually have got the Stormbolt from the Murden, not feeling we need to take any defensive options versus this team. Really aggressive, this also, these two do pair well with each other. You can finish the baseline quest, you can share the bolt, and then give you extra stacks. Extra damage there, the Murden is what I was talking about on that, Johanna. You can walk it off, you can take Tether by my head into a Stukov silence. Murden might just go down, last second, walks out of the silence, leaps to safety. Nice opener by both teams, trading a lot of damage here. We do have the Bonds of Justice on my uh, Arsenal Synergy on Phoenix to get a little nerf. This is like the 75% health goal for Alex so far. We'll see if she continues into those. A little switch. Of course, Ace in the Hall is the shot. Nothing surprising there. Murden did pop over to try and slow down this rotation. So I was, uh, was going to be looking for that. Happy to see Random Task doing it. Not really any great heroes on the side of Stitch. It'd be crazy for that. Solo in any case, other than Lajana herself, that Iron Skin, but she's taking a lot of damage. Play Sonya match up top, seem to be trading health bars for now. In fact, I didn't look at this Sonya, she actually went tough as nails, no war paint sustain for her. Tough as nails will be good versus this Rainer later. Stitch be crazy, we'll get their siege camp out. Looks like Alex is interested in starting hers. This Junkrat's sort of floating around, pretty much what I expected him to be doing. The Junkrat Muradin to be stalling, lane clearing, all the Junkrat lane clearing anyway, while the rest of them do what they want to do. No real action yet, other than the big Clash metal. With the Murden trying to slow things down. Alright, let's come out a little off though, we're gonna have to have trouble walking that off, you might have trouble walking this tether off though. Oh, first blood, Phoenix takes out the Muradin, stitch be crazy, claim that dwarf, trying to leap to safety, not gonna happen, maybe a little overconfident, that kill will allow stitch to be crazy to take the bottom siege camp, I have to clear in for sure little. Blaze matchup going basically still mate on top, so just be crazy. We'll get here nice and early.
bombs or hits for the Junkrat. The only real outlier talent, of course, here is the Zubrin. Fair play. Nice lead here of CPC Crazy on this initial shrine. My F could go in, get a big tether. Gonna get some squishy. Sun is on the point. Brandon's has a little low. We'll lead back to that Alex Shaza safety circle of healing. Crazy almost halfway done, but now average dose is here on the point in the course. Nice to climb by the line. My F goes in maybe a little late, but here's the Dragon Queen. Merlin, though, almost dead. Alex pulled way into the front, not really where she wants to be, but those health bars aren't looking too great. For she should be crazy, they will retreat for now. Johanna, excuse me, Sonya may be in a little bit of trouble. She should be crazy, should be able to re-engage as soon as this Dragon Queen has worn off. And they've put some, uh, ball taps. Trying to come back in here. Took up silence, maybe a little off here. Look at though, she pulls people back in. No, will be canceled. team can get a kill, they can definitely secure this shrine. Johanna is sitting in that fire, not really where she wants to be. So it looks like the shrine is going to go up to be crazy though, they just need one more, but can Amp Joes get any kill? Big Tether by Maev, double back, and that's a silence on the blaze! This Stukov lurking arm with Maev Tether proving very effective for Stitches Be Crazy, as they are now up 2-0, Punisher is on the way, looks like Sonya will go deal with the little bottom, so... It should be crazy, looking very strong here. One is calling out Defcon. Oh, that is the Blaze. Makes sense. Fortunately, Blaze is getting lit up. Uh, Sean C. B. Moon. Speak of Silence. Silence is really strong against Blaze. Once they get in there, tank a lot, uses his ability to disrupt. Heroes like Alarak and Stukov make him really miserable. Monxilla maybe in a bit of trouble, already has the vault here, now gets stunned, low on mana. Does have the Spirit of Vengeance out. Almost, uh, about two-thirds, three-quarters of a level lead here. For Stitch be crazy, they did open up top, no real damage to the port, no significant damage anyway. Alex will have to go home. Should give Stitch be crazy a little more time out on the map, that being said, two of their own members went home, so... If things continue at this pace, both teams will hit ten around the same time. We will see if there's any sort of fights over camps or invades. Looks like it should be crazy thinking about it. Bella was so not very healthy to run in here. About half health out. Silence instantly cancelled. Random pass that was stuck in the back line. Gets bursted. Map gets a nice tether, but here's a huge boop by Beeves. Just finishes that quest outright. And that was a four or even five man stack. Uh, unless Junkrat has another mind boop, this should be a camp. So it should be crazy. Oops, they thought they capped it. Now they go back. Plays hit at top. Hit that soaking. That will be another kill. This uh second time Murden's gone down. Random task is really gonna have to start respecting this Maev Tether and the Stukop lurking arm silence combo. Stitches be crazy as he is employing. Now, Stitches be crazy have a bit of momentum, but this is still early game for all intents and purposes. Once level 10 comes along, there's gonna be a lot of alt power coming out from both teams. That's really going to decide this fight. No forts have gone down yet. Stitches Be Crazy is has a slight lead. They have the momentum and kills. But uh, a level 10 plus, maybe around level 13 to 16 fight, is really going to decide the tempo of this game. It is a best of one, so there's no second chances. I feel like May Ravage Joe's is not disrespecting Stitches Be Crazy, but not really... Um, Maybe not being quite as conscious of these these silence and tether and stun combos as they could be. It's actually a lot of interrupts for this Muradin and this Blaze. So their traditional escape skills are strong, but they're gonna have to be careful. This is a nice delay by Stitches. Be uh, excuse me, Evich Joe's. Both teams are actually doing it. They're waiting to cap the camp, try and get maximum value. Junkrat's already bottom and pushed in this lane. This is better for Average Joe's. Level 10 is here. So we actually have Planet Cracker, Blessed Shield. The darn it, can't remember the name of that Maya Vault. There's a Warden's Cage, Massive Shove, Wrath of the Berserker, Avatar, Life Finder, Bunker, Hyperion, and Retire. Yeah, Retire. Here we go on point. Sonic Wrath is out. Not 
crazy they just planted a cracker. It is. I would have actually really expected a uh not planet cracker, I'd let planet cracker rip about right now. There it is indeed. The silence is huge, the laser is huge. Avid shows, not happy about this, but the turnaround damage is a big deal. Down goes Rainer, down goes my yes. Someone stuck back there. Cheese, I don't know how we got there. If he blew the forward or what? Maybe got boofed, I didn't quite see. Started off decently, but the turnaround was big. Would have liked to see Planet Cracker used sooner there. I think it came out maybe two to three seconds too late and missed a lot of damage. Or potential missed a lot of damage anyway. We could see the idea behind that execution. Um, but this, I have to say, this bunker really counters that. The initial damage was big. Bunker's so good. Yeah. That was an insane bunker from Defcon. Really saved that fight 100% of them. Of course, the Alex. They managed to silence the Blaze or somehow, you know, displace him or zone him from the team. And do that combo again. That'll look amazing. But, um, yeah, he, was, he wasn't in the group of people being silenced. I think that was a triple silence. So it looks really good, but Blaze is there just in time to uh, throw down that bunker and keep his team alive. Really well played. Nice defense here from Stitches Crazy. Sonya just wailing away in this top court, by the way. Blaze coming to try and stop her. Bottom, uh, just Crazy is chasing. Here's the big tether, but we need to silence. There goes Blessed Shield. Okay, silence not available, perhaps? This might be a turnaround. Here comes Rift Tire. Stukov looks like he will go down. Most likely, maybe he will. But Rainer may be in trouble. Nope. I, don't, I didn't notice cooldowns. Either Stukov didn't have the silence, or he didn't opt to use it. I'm not sure. But it is a 15 second cooldown, so it's possible he dropped it on this defense and I didn't notice. But on that Blessed Shield, there really needed to be a silence there, and that fight would have easily stitches be crazy. So get one or two kills there with the silence. So they had the right idea, but maybe didn't have the skills. A little bit of a comms issue. Not worth the chase and the uh, ultimate use unless you have the combo. And that's another sort of case where if you had um, Salvo on Phoenix for Planet Cracker, you could use that because there's a decent amount of ways to proc it off Johanna and Stuka. I don't really like this by Techio. Should uh, really, really save that silence CD for when he needs it. They have tons of clear power on this team. They don't need to drop it on minions. As we saw in that last engagement bottom, not having the silence really, really hurt their, their chances. They've been winning all these fights off the silence. So key. I talked about Maev being the anchor hero, and she is in a sense, but this stuck up silence needs to be really on point or these fights could be dangerous. Now, I don't want to be too critical of Techio because he, he or she, I don't know, has landed all of the silences up until that point very, very well. So, can't criticize. But looks like um, Evan Shows is going to push in this bottom fort. Sun may be able to take with top one and trade. We'll see what they opt to do middle. Next shrine is top, so pushing in this top fort is a little more relevant than the bottom. Minion wave should take care of that. Nice recognition by the shows. Able trade fort. No particularly crazy talents. Interesting to see no escape by Sunny here. Extra move speed for her. Both teams doing pretty well here. Oops. Play black spike. Um, Average Joe's is caught up in terms of momentum. This is actually going to go... This is actually good for Average Joe's. Because no one wants to come down here for a while. So this wave should keep building up in their in their favor a little bit. Both Bruiser camps out. Same time. Average Joe's is actually ahead in EXP now. I think largely because they cleared a wave or two down here. And some of these later game kills. 4-3. to three. This fight's going to determine a lot of damage. It should be crazy to win this, might be able to do some keep damage, or at least keep wall. But uh, there's still a full fort here in towers for Stitch is crazy, so a little bit better for them on the defensive if they lose this. Of course, no team wants to lose an objective. But this Dragon Queen is available for Jesus. They're going to have to watch out. Johanna is also really getting zoned out at this point here. I would uh, like to see this wave cleared from Avenger to try and give them a little tempo. Am I thinking about going in? Didn't feel quite safe. 
Priscilla looking to go in and get this done. She's going to take a lot of damage. We'll leave here to Sonya. There's a nice silence, but out comes the Hyperion. That was also a rip tire from the junk rat. Lankilla trying to get on this junk rat. Not going to happen. Down she goes. Sonya's about to go down too. He's the planet cracker. Lasering down the Murden, but not quite there. And there was some weakness again. No salvo. Very, very narrow field of damage that Sheets can output here with that ultimate. Has to be in the perfect choke point, or they won't really get the value they're looking for. Choke up does have the very real action, so we do see it there. But this is 3v5. Average uh, switch be crazy. It looks like they're gonna have to accept defeat on this point and set up the defense. Bottom's actually uh, looking quite nice now. <clears throat> this stacked up a lot more than I thought it would. A little bit of a uh, lack of coordination there. The switches be crazy. My Ev went in heavy alone. Had to use all their abilities to get out. Not really ideal. Neither going in with the Johanna. Here again, going in. Another Punisher. This is a little greedy from Moxzilla, and he might just pay for it. It's actually blocked by Terrain. Johanna is in trouble here. Couple running out, and she will go down. Stitches be crazy, not putting on quite as good a defense as they did last time. Sonya is bottom, which is fine, she's not very good on defense. Jeez, gonna have to watch out. Painting that uh, Punisher, not ideal. Of course, Johan is dead, so it's no great one person to do it. Jeez, gonna have to watch out here, they go all in on him. So they still have a bit of Punisher, they want this keep, or at least a lot of keep damage, and without the Johanna or the Sonya here, they're willing to uh, just go for it out from the Hyperion as well. I would not recommend my Ed goes in on this and be the twice. Sonya is here now though, spinning the wind in the air like a helicopter. Looks like they will save their keep for the moment. No, it will go down the last moment and Moxilla might just go down on the side indeed. She does no more ward and here comes Riptire trying to boot Sonya back into the team. Not going to quite be there. Stormbolt will miss. Mayev just being a little too aggressive once again. Not a hero who can just rush into enemy teams. When the hero was first released, she could. She had 20 armor and all this other nonsense. Um, not the case anymore. Really needs to go in with uh, a heavy duty frontliner like Ajano or Sonya. Just not really working out with them. 15 to 18 here, 2 level 8, and keep down 4. Average dose. Not sure I really like this talent here. There's not that many stuns, and I don't even think there's any roots on this team. Oh, for super strain to proc. There's Blaze stun, Murden stun. I think that's it. Unless Rip Tire counts, but even then, it's alright. I would have liked to see Universal Carrier though. Phantom Red. Alright, so... Stitches be crazy, he's lost a bit of momentum here. He's keeping down, they will have Catapult Pressure. And of course they're losing the race to 20, so they're gonna have to pick a fight before level 20 if... Well, if they want to, but they should, from a strategic point of view. Maybe try and get a nice flank big, you know, I don't... I don't even know if I've seen Warden Cage all game, honestly. I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe I'm crazy, but I haven't really seen it used. I see my have going in a lot. I don't really see the cage being used. This would be nice. Don't quite go for it. This camp, this is a double wave plus a camp bottom. That is an issue. Looks like um, Sonya is going back from that, recognizing this. But I like these movements by Stitch to be crazy. They you know, ran up here, enemy territory, looking for a sort of flank or invade play. Didn't find it, but the fact that they're looking forward is important. You know, they recognize that 20's coming soon, we need a good fight, running at them head on's been a little hard. Let's try and see if we can get them from the side. So I like the thought process from Stitch be crazy, I think it's the right move. Possible invade here from Average Joe's. Will they steal this camp? Looks like they will. Again, this is an issue, this would be a double camp. Wave and a half, double catapult, this is so much pressure top. Especially with the keep down. So it looks like Average Joe's is setting up for the objective, but they're not going to get it. I would have... they still had time to go pick a fight, especially up here, if they wanted to. Now they're basically conceding the objective completely. And, um... 
I'm just gonna take a while to clear all this. This is a lot. Okay, my F2 to help her. But by the time I'm needing it back to the objective, it's gonna be over pretty much for uh for average Joe's. So not looking too good. She misplays here. They had the right idea. Could have tried again, I feel, before this imminent 20. But um Sort of waiting around too much led to all this camp stealing and map pressure from average Joes. Let's see what they grab here for the 20s. Defense time, once again, which could just be crazy. I feel like they could have left Sonya top, Red shut out one or even two more pressure. waves here. Considering, as mentioned, by the time they got to the objective, there was around 30, 30, 35 skulls taken. So Sonya's up here again. But then she won't really be here for this defense, so slight misplay. Sonya should have just stayed here, cleared these waves, and she could have been bottom already. Well, Sonya used to shut up top pressure. The rebind upgraded, bunker upgraded. Light finder. Ooh, a lot of damage here on Bellalos and Kashio. They're gonna have to watch out. You boot back. Sonya is probably toast here. She is cut down by me to execute this. Very well could be game. No Sonya, 4v5, half health punisher. My have to be the cage and tether. She gets it, but she's booped out of it. And again, this planet cracker getting no value. This bad man. Great cage and tether. From my ev. Planet cracker was off the mark there, unfortunately. Funker, of course, was still there. Average show, excuse me. Crazy, trying to grab their best to stop this core push. It looks like they will be unsuccessful. They will at least take out the junk rat. Valiant defense, not quite there. Good job indeed to average Joes. That was impressive. Take a let's look at some of the stats. Five to nine. A couple of these kills came at the very end. Of course, one of these was at the end as well. Healing is comparable. Tanking, pretty comparable. XP, pretty comparable. I have to say, I'm actually really impressed with Stitches Be Crazy. I think they had a. That game could have been a lot more competitive with a few different moves. Maybe coordinate a little better in a couple of their, their late game, mid game team fights in that 13 to 16 range. Or maybe. Uh, try and pick that pre-20 fight, look for a better opportunity other than defending against a full Punisher and being down versus 20 in their base, pretty unideal. They did they did look for it, but they tried once, they had time to try again, maybe leave the Sonya around a little bit. But uh, that was an exciting match, and Stitches be crazy, I uh, gave Average Joes a lot of trouble, I think more trouble than they were expecting, certainly more trouble than I was expecting. I think they can be pretty happy with their performance, look here to polish up a few things, of course that means um, average Joes will move on, and I don't know if the next, um, there were the other, the people who are facing the next round has already been decided, I haven't looked at the bracket yet, but we will have to get back to that. Let's see if we can get an interview from people. One moment, please. Let's see if I can. I have died a little too much trying to make some, some big plays. Gotta respect the momentum my abs want, you know kind of go, 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 but a little more patience would have paid off for this my of trying to get a response for an interview. Let's just go to the wait screen really quick so I can do some stuff. Oh, whoops. I have a thingy turned on. Haha, -ha. social.
Alrighty, let's try and get an interview going here. Mm, let me see. Okay, they are all in a region. Oops. Trying to get a channel, everyone can go in. Hey! There he is, alright. What's up? Hey, hey guys, how's it going? Congrats on your best of one there. On Infernal Shrines versus Stitches Thank Be Crazy. You. How you Thank feeling? You. Uh, game was going very in interesting at the start. Stitches Be Crazy had some of the momentum, some of the kills. A Punisher uh, <clears throat> giving you some trouble. Talk to me about that. Oh, we were just really slow on rotations in the beginning of the game. And then when, as soon as we got that cut off, when we got to that, when we got there on time, we you know we were able to fight it pretty easily. Yeah, it was. It looked pretty close a couple times. They traded like that Rainer kill, I think, for Maev or something. But then the Dragon Queen and Hyperion came out, and they had to run. <laughs> but, were those on the shrine? Yeah, those yeah, were on the shrine? the bottom right. shrine fight. I think it was the yeah third Punisher. It, it was two. I think that was two for one. It was. It was. It was. Yeah. There was an initial kill, and then <clears throat> someone retreating also got picked off from Stitches Be Crazy. But <clears throat> considering the skill level differences, I'd have to say they put up uh, a lot more of a fight slash pretty solid performance than I thought they would. It was a good fight. They were they, running, they were running a wombo, which can be hard to execute consistently. When so when they were hitting it, it was doing pretty well. But right, yeah. The bunker was able to save us quite a bit. Oh from man, that, uh... there were some crazy bunkers <laughs> from you. Even in chat, people <laughs> were like bunker. Uh, you know, was, I was really proud yeah. because I've been telling him he needed to work on his bunker timing, and he was perfect today. I, I've, yeah, I've been pretty was, rough with my blaze in the past, so. Yeah, yeah they put up a good yeah. fight. It was a really it, good game. It was it was a good fight. I was I, I was surprised they were willing to go with some of the draft picks they were going. Like, some of them were pretty good picks. Yeah, I was. it was a little melee heavy. You can see the Wombo idea. I think I still would have liked to see Salvo over Planet Cracker, Wombo or not. I um, think it was a response to Bunker, but I could be wrong. That's true. Yeah, if they could somehow manage to silence the Blaze or zone him out, but they didn't have like this Junkrat style displacement the way you did. So, yeah, it was close. It was fun. It was fun to watch. It was cool to execute. But like you said, once you sort of got your timings and got there in time, and it was at this Dragon Queen Hyperion like counter punch anytime they jumped on you in the Bunker, and it was cool. Yeah, that's basically they were they were extremely reliant on getting an early kill, and if they couldn't. Uh... You know, they were they would struggle because Maev would be out of position. They don't have a lot of safe mechanics or burst heals or anything, so Right. For sure. So So do we know oh it looks like you are versus this is Jimmy. I hear good things about them. Any any yeah. thoughts moving into that I next mean, it's, matchup? It's gonna it's gonna be really tough for us. They're uh, like a pretty good open division team from what I understand. Yeah, that's what I hear. I haven't seen them play, but that's the word in the street. Yeah, so um, we have our hands cut right. out, but I think uh, our goal today is just to play games and learn. And winning is something that's good, but not, you know, it's not quite the regular season yet. You know, It isn't, kind no. Of, this uh, is just really a for fun tournament. Obviously, there's going to be some bracket imbalances just by the nature of it. But that's also part of the appeal. You get these quote-unquote cross-division um, um, matchups and things like that. Uh, we... <laughs> Jesus, who I believe is on your team, says, "How does it feel to have a sub support with only four games on Alex before today, Kappa?" <laughs> <laughs> well, so actually, we have two subs in today: uh, Biebs and Jaz Jazzus. Okay. Um, okay. He does. <laughs> he does. He doesn't support man, but we decided to put our um, like we, we wanted we, all of our we wanted all of our starting guys playing their regular roles so that you know they get more practice and stuff. Absolutely. How the Alex seemed pretty on to... point, those uh, Dragon Queen timings. Oh, 
Yeah, he was good. Nice. He was really good today. Yeah. I, you know, honestly, the way we were able to, you know, collect ourselves and come back, I, I was, it was something that, you know, hopefully is a good sign of things later. You know, we won't get um, that stress. Stress is not the word. Inting. Yeah, I mean, you were, you were <laughs> down just a tiny bit. It wasn't significant enough to be like, <clears throat> you know, oh, we need a comeback now. It wasn't there, but they had a couple kills, I, a little bit of momentum. Was, that's all. Yeah, it was like half a level to a level lead, I think. But they were like taking all of our camps and doing a decent amount of structure damage. I was dying. I was inting. A little uh, bit. I, I was expect. I was like, <laughs> murden has got to respect this silence because the traditional jump out ain't working, you know. Well, the goal is you have to wait for the silence to come out, walk out, and then run, then and, jump out. And then hope you avoid condemn as well, which can mini stun you out of jump, which I think hit you once or something. It's annoying. I've I've been that Muradin more than once. Well, <laughs> the problem is, is that you also have to you have to worry about my F tether. That's true. Problem. Which is also why a lot of the times, I don't know if you ever noticed, I was like kind of on Stukov a lot so that he just couldn't get lurking arms. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed that. It was nice. Pretty good positioning. Um, what else was that I was going to say? Yeah, that, that mentality, like, again, I wouldn't say you had to come back in that game. That's too strong. But, you know, whether ahead or a little behind or neutral, you know, maintaining the, the mental game is important. So glad to see you guys. We just had to get the that. ball rolling. As we all. also yeah. knew that, like, our comp was going to, like, especially over the shrine, our comp was going to have a much better um, much better control over the shrines when heroics hit. Because we had her Hyperion. We had, uh, we had Riptire. We had... Either Alex, heroic. I think cleansing flame could have been a, just as good a pick there, even though everyone talks about how broken uh, life Binary is. Cleansing flames are still really good though. Just it's, you know, it's really yeah, it's really particularly good on this map because you can still minion shots, which is kind of the the goal. Right. What Alex sure. is so good at. Yeah, that's um, that's basically what I thought as well, and I mentioned this somewhere on level eight or nine in the cast, like. Sure, stitches be crazy it's the momentum now, but we gotta wait till these heroics come up and then see a fight, you know, and that'll definitely, you know, determine the pace of the game more. Yeah. And that's one map where I'm just like I told him I'm like, you go Hyperion, I don't care if you like playing the Raider. Yeah, Hyperion was the right choice, I think. Yeah. Like ninety five percent of the time I'm all about the Raiders, but yeah. that map in particular, because it steals minion shots and they're more likely to be in it is closed in. Yeah, no, it definitely got a lot of zoning value, and of course it gets siege value. Um, technically, the raider got what a three damage nerf two days ago. Went from twenty, th maybe just a two damage. Anyway. I mean, plus it's te technically a twenty ten plus ten. you take ten ten percent nerf off that because of ace on a hole. But yeah, that too as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still a fan of Hyperion because I like big AOE, like zony, pushy style ults. But that's just me. <laughs> 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 I, I, I'm i generally, I don't know, it's it's iffy for me. I just think that t tossing up the like consistent damage and utility, believe it or not, of Raiders Raiders for the Hyperion. Because, yeah, you know, it checks, bushes, it checks bushes, it can help you clear camps, does a lot of other things. It, uh, it so. finally hurts home with you. That really bugged me. And that's almost <laughs> yeah. the reason, like, I tried it out and, you know, it's just like, damn thing won't hearth with me. And now it does, so I'll probably like it more. <laughs> I feel like some of the maybe I don't know if you whoever plays the Rainer, I feel like sometimes when I try to tell the Raider to attack somebody and instead just moves to the area and then starts attacking whatever. Or is it <laughs> yeah. you have to right click on the hero? Like the level twenty leash range, right? It's it's really big. I think that it doesn't immediately attack people, but it like it's like a attack move, but it just um it it tr it's it, it triggers not triggers, responds slowly. Right. I guess you get yeah, I just feel like I've lost a kill or two sometimes, and I'm it like, just attack, proc slowly. attack the so hero, if, please. So if you tell it to attack a hero, it should attack it right away. But if you tell it to move to an area, it's not going to attack a hero right away. Right. Because I think it must it must uh, think that it's telling it to move, then attack, as opposed to, like, attack, move. Right, yeah. It's probably just my fault, and mishandling it. I was, like, trying to chase down an Asmodan, and I don't know early game with it and I couldn't get the kill because it kept not attacking him despite being like right on top of him. I don't, I don't know what's going on. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, like as weird as it sounds like I don't think Rainer is a, especially with that heroic, Rainer is not a brainless character anymore. He's not a lane minion. Like, He's definitely pretty strong in the meta. He's strong in the meta, but he requires, he requires very good positioning and he requires very good resource management. Right. And and usage of the Raiders Rainers because now it's, you are, it's on you to trigger your health. 
And most of the time, a lot of people are taking the armor at level four, so, you know, you have to know when to use that. And, you know, uh, the barrels now, penetrating around is now a legitimate kill threat because of, you know, ace in the hole, so. Yeah. Yeah, Ranger's good. He got a little tuned down. I think he's still maybe a titch, quote-unquote, overtuned by, like, 2% or something. We'll see. Um, I, I would wait a little bit before you adjust him. But oh yeah, at least a week or two. But I think the initial like, you know, could a kitten or whatever does those nice analysis. It, I think his win rate did already drop like three or four percent, but it was up near sixty. So he's looking to get it down. No, he definitely feels a little better. That ace in the hole ten percent loss was was a nice start. Well, yeah, they need to buff some of the other talents though, because they're really bad. If they nerf ace in the hole too much, uh, he's not going to be playable. Yeah, because like his level one, like you basically take him. To clear waves, I guess you'd, only, <laughs> you'd have to take it, the exe the what's it called exterminator. Yeah, like that's like the the trait one is so bad, it's so it worthless. That... It really is. It's pretty garbage. I've seen uh, people do some pretty crazy things with the exterminator, though. I gotta say, uh, like Rainer um, plus a support can run around and take bosses and stuff. So, actually, if you watched HGC yesterday, I believe Heroes Hearth played Rainer with Executioner on no, Exterminator on um Battlefield of Attorney and dude was shredding the immortal oh yeah yeah, yeah, Cro yeah. crowan was on it crowan was on it but i think most of the time it's not worth losing 30 percent of your damn 20 percent of your damage now maybe it is maybe it is worth now on a very Love. specific map probably but in yeah general, battlefield yeah. battlefield on attorney maybe infernal shrines but even on battlefield of attorney like people didn't take it because it's like do i do 50 percent damage to the immortal or do i do 30 percent more damage from every ability to anyone for, yeah, to any hero exactly so it is hard to give up, but uh, maybe Exterminator will be a little more competitive now that Ace in the Hole is 20%, and I guess we'll have to see. We will see. All right, For gents. Sure. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Um, good luck moving forward in your next match versus This Is Jimmy. Looks like you have over an hour. I think it's a 5.30 p.m. Eastern game, so you've got time to chill out, watch some streams or whatever. Yep. Thank uh, you for casting, man. Yeah, no problem. It was fun. Thanks for putting on a great show, and good luck moving forward. All right, thank, thank you. you man. Okay, that was Average Joe's. Took the win over. Stitches be crazy. Our next match will be in approximately 17 minutes. Let's see if I can get some music going. I could stop the stream, but I don't really want to. Actually, 16 minutes. Just call it 15. I guess I should throw some text up there. Text. Cog Whistle, thank you for the follow, by the way. I appreciate that.
Thank you.